segment of Del Marva Life is brought to you by Coastal Hospice and Palliative Care. You know, there's a reason we long for the days of being a child. Many of us miss a season of life where we essentially had a carefree existence where we had the time to lay in the grass and look up at the sky and, and dream about what we might be when we grow up. Yeah, but for some children, the death of a loved one can fill those days with grief and with insecurity. And that's why Coastal Hospice invites children in that situation to hope and healing with horses. I'd like to introduce you to you this afternoon, Elaine Capen, who's the president of Coastal Hospice and Palliative Care. This is Reverend Sharon Hutchison, who is the manager of Spiritual Care Services. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so hope and healing with horses. What is that? Give us an overview. Hope and Healing with Horses is an event that we host annually to support children who've lost a parent or sibling, grandparent, a closely connected family member or loved one um, to death. And we encourage them by using the horses to find ways to share the emotions, the feelings, the experience that they've had in that loss. Why horses? Horses are uniquely um, suited for this because as prey animals, their survival depends on reading their environment, reading the situation, being very intuitive about people. And so they really can connect with the child and understand the child's vulnerabilities. And all animals have been shown in research to be very therapeutic for children because they're non-judgmental, there's no expectation, there's a privacy because horses can't tell. Um, <laughs> so the, the child can just relate to the horse and tell secrets to the horse and uh, they're large and they're furry and you can hold them, you can wrap your arms around their neck and give them a hug and um, it, it just works there. very well. Hmm? That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so we've all grown up Remind us what it's like for a child, what they face going through uh, grief and, and death. Children often feel very isolated going through losses. Mm. They um, may within the family <clears throat> become isolated. They don't always have the words mm -hmm. to share what they're thinking or feeling um, and surrounded by adults who may, may communicate differently. Um, they often feel different from their peers because they've experienced a death and just by their very nature um, will think that there aren't others who have gone through that same kind of experience. Um, and so we look for ways to help them be able to communicate that those feelings and to feel safe and know that it's okay and one of those especially one of the things that can help is being with other children who mm. have had a similar experience. And I think sometimes parents trying to protect their kid mm -hmm. may not have involved them in the funeral or in some of, uh, you know, maybe being with the person as they were dying, trying to protect them, but that actually feeds that feeling of being isolated and, uh, you know, maybe not having permission to talk about it. And mm -hmm. so, um, this is a great way for them to express and, and like Sharon said, be with other kids and know that they're not alone in what they feel. Okay. So who would you say would be the ideal participant for this program? A child that's, that's experienced the death of someone who is close to them. We typically encourage that to be within about the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, we do make exceptions for that sometimes based on circumstances, but generally the children who attend this event are children who have lost, as I said earlier, a parent, a sibling, maybe a close family friend, um, a grandparent, where, where the relationship with that person is closely connected enough that it really has definitely impacted their day-to-day -day life. Can you define uh, child for me? How, how old are we talking? Uh, I was going to say, what, six years old to 14 years old? Okay, yes. okay. Yeah. okay. And, and it's not limited to non-hospice 
families. Right? Correct. It's open to any child in the community that's had a loss, a significant loss. Mm -hmm. And and you have counselors there who are who are trained in grief support. We do. Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. And that's important, right? Yes. Members of our staff, um, our spiritual care, bereavement, and chaplaincy staff are all on site. And uh, social work. And yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. And we not only offer support for the children, but each child must be accompanied by an adult, um, typically a parent or guardian. And so there's some opportunity for the adults to also have support through the help of one of our social workers um, as they look for resources, particularly about how to help their children, how right. to support their children. And the day is designed so that there are different activities for the children as well as for the adults. The oh, adults okay. get some uh, education about what their child may be going right. through and um, well, get an opportunity to kind of be with other folks that have lost someone also. Thank you so much for doing this. Give us the where's and the whens. Sure. The event is held on September, will be held on September the 29th at Kindred Spirit Farm on Johnson Road here in Salisbury. And um, it is again, as we said, open to children 6 to 14. We do ask that you call our office to register in advance. So it's that free. For our planning, it is a free event. It's free. Mm -hmm. All right, Starts Elaine. at 9 in the morning? 9.30 to 3. 9.30 to 3. Elaine Capen and Reverend Sharon Hutchinson, thank you both for being here this yes. afternoon. Thank you so and much for, for having us. Yes.